let's recap the entire two-hour broadcast, right? What are, what are the most important things? Uh, number one, Tekken 8 is mad popular. There are more people playing it than ever. It's like 46k peak versus 20k for Tekken 7 peak. So a hell of people are playing the game. Uh, what else are they talking about? Eddie is coming out later. They got a patch coming at the end of the week. Or end of, which I say a week because it's only a week left in February. But at the end of February, early March is going to be the next update where they're going to actually uh, give us this Tekken shop and stuff. And so the stuff that's going to be in that update is going to be the in-game collaboration with Uniqlo plus the Tekken shop, which is going to be a place where you can purchase uh, items like this Uniqlo shirt, which is actually free. But they're actually going to be old uh, legacy costumes for the characters. Uh, this is the integration they have with Uniqlo. You can see it's in the actual fight lounge in the store there. Uh, if you have $850,000, you can actually uh, purchase this yourself and put your name and your face everywhere in there. So hit a parada for that. Uh, the Tekken shop is going to cost real money and they're going to sell legacy skins. So it's kind of like a, a dollars ratio. So if you see 400 Tekken coins, then that's going to be about four US dollars basically to buy these uh, classic legacy skins, etc. So like this Jin Tekken 4 outfit is going to be $4. You see 400 Tekken coins here. So that's a $4 skin for Jin. They've been made from the ground up. They're not just copy pasted from the past, etc., etc., etc. They're currently coming out with Jin, Jun, and Kazuya for the legacy costumes and Ling Xiaoyu. Uh, and then they also have these avatars. So this is the Jun cus this is the Jun one. This is the Ling one. Uh, then they also have these avatars here uh, for your fight lounge. If you want to pay 400 bucks for these ones, you can have a uh, Reina, Shaheen, King, or Raven. Uh, these ones are also four bucks each. They come with special animations and fireworks and that sort of thing. So you can celebrate in Fight Lounge for something that I didn't quite understand. Uh, unless they start streaming the Tekken World Tour uh, in the Fight Lounge itself, right? Uh, so this is what they talk about. There is no cross progression on this stuff. So if you purchase something on your PlayStation, it will not show up on your Steam. If you purchase something on your Steam, it will not be on your PlayStation. So uh, cross commerce does not exist here, even though the game does have cross play. That's important to note. If you guys have stuff you want to report about the game that's buggy or whatever, make sure you guys use the hashtag T8Report on X. No one calls it Twitter anymore, apparently. Um, so that's how they're gathering feedback and implementing things. The balance changes that are coming are not balance changes. They're actually going to be just like fixes or something. So it's going to be character adjustments and bug fixes more than actual balance. Uh, they'll have another update in April that will be similar to that. Uh, and then May, of course, is when the tour... We'll be going and it's basically any time after that then they showed a bunch of stuff for a long time these soundtracks are coming now tag 2 revolution are going to be coming they haven't been on the streaming services along with everything else uh they've got this metal art stuff they got the shibori clothes stuff edwin denim stuff figure arts stuff more stuff tech world tour starts in april and there's going to be what there's going to be a global leaderboard and a regional leaderboard unclear how many people will qualify from each youtube please load but the idea in general is that uh you can have two master plus events with evo japan i'm going off just this thumbnail preview hey will you play please thank you uh evo japan is gonna be the kickoff of the first master plus event but the actual dojos will start on the 13th so that's gonna be a couple weeks before this right so you get two weeks before evo japan for the dojos to actually kick off uh, i think that's gonna be kind of a big deal here uh, and then I think here is where they talk about the regional leaderboards, where six highest dojo events is how you're going to place into your region. But again, they didn't tell us how uh, many people qualify for each. And I think in this slide here is when they tell us your two paths, right? So you get your global leaderboards, which is how what we're used to, right? You go around the world, you get all your points, your most master plus, your best master plus events, your best master events, challenge events, dojos, all those points combined. That's a global leaderboard. The regional one is just the six dojos in your region. What the regions are, how many regions, we don't know. Uh, but all those people end up at the finals together. So maybe potentially if you can make to all these global events, you can qualify in your region alone. So that's something that's potentially going to happen. Chipotle is doing something, blah, 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 more updates. And they want to get everything sorted out before the actual um, tour kicks off. So if you guys have stuff to report, we'll use that hashtag T8 underscore report. Uh, another thing they talked about was pluggers. They were saying that basically they need uh, legal requirements to ban people permanently forever uh and it sounds like a pain in the ass but they said make sure you use the report feature uh i don't think they should be that extreme with pluggers i think they should just time them out if they plug make sure the wins most importantly make sure the wins go to the people who get plugged on i think if people get their wins and their points i think that most people will be happy and they won't even care about the plugger 
Uh, I think that's like the simplest solution. Give us the wins, time them out. If they plug two in a row, time them out even longer next time, right? Uh, give it like a 24-hour cycle or something of like extending the, the, the wait time between matches, right? I think that's probably a legal workaround so you don't have to actually permanently ban them. Just make it a pain in the ass for them if they ever do decide to plug, right? Uh, and I think, you know, so many games have done this in the past. It's kind of funny that they really haven't uh, picked up anything from all these other games that are doing things like that. Uh, other than that, you know, I think that was the majority of the important information. Uh, not, they're not really looking through balance changes. It looks like more bug fixes than anything else. So balance will be interesting. I think whatever you think is a strong character right now is probably going to be pretty much unchanged going forward. Um, like they might fix a couple things here and there. Like there's obviously infinites on Panda on this stage and stuff. Uh, with Jin, so they'll fix those sort of issues, but I don't know that they're going to change much else. Uh, then they finally showed us Eddie, right? And they showed us Eddie in the game, and to me, the character's cool, right? They've, they've redone, basically, the character from the ground up, uh, but, you know, it's it's a work in progress. It's not it's not there yet. They showed out, they showed off his different outfits here, uh, which are pretty cool. They're, I don't think they showed the second, the 2P outfit, but maybe they did. I'm just going to skip through it real fast. There it is. That's a 2P right there. Color scheme. Uh, 3P is the unique outfit just for Tekken 8, as most 3P outfits are. And Tekken 4 is the, or the fourth outfit. It's the Tekken 7 uh, classic throwback look. But I think my only complaint about the character is just the idle animation here. It just looks stiff to me. Uh, other than that, you know, not much crazy stuff. He's got this new mechanic in the top, which they've added in for all characters that have this kind of install mechanic. So Claudia with the Starburst, you see the icon below the life bar. Eddie's got his one, whatever you want to call it, man. It starts with an M, that's all I know for sure. Uh, but they redid a bunch of his animations, right? So his relaxed dance is now uh, reanimated, his handstands reanimated. Uh, he's got this power up, of course. Uh, you can mash out threes or you can mash out fours and it's going to do full things for you. Uh, his feet are kind of big. They should probably address his feet size or uh, expect it to be a joke. You see his feet glowing there. He's at level two of his uh, Manzingo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I really doubt they're going to change his feet size, to be honest, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, the character seems interesting, though. I, I don't know if he's actually going to be uh, more or less difficult than he was in the past. Uh, personally, I always thought he was a little bit difficult, like, as he progressed through the games, but it looks like this time around, they're kind of making him more accessible than in the past. So we'll see where the character actually ends up. You guys can go watch this full VOD if you want to see all the stuff they showed about Eddie. Of course, if you guys have the premium deluxe editions, etc. You'll have access to them 72 hours early, but they haven't released the actual release date for Eddie yet. And that is that. That was it. That was it. I summed up the whole thing there in a couple minutes. That was pretty good, I think, right? So if you guys enjoyed that, boom, click that subscribe button, click that follow button, catch it on YouTube. Boom, easy, so easy. Thank you very much. I'm a professional. Noise. Boom. <laughs>